Morrison goes to find the Lumberjacks. He finds they have their own locker room, which has a printed sign with a WWE logo, and it says, Lumberjacks. He opens the door. Not he human finds cage. <laughs> no, it was an undead human cage. Gotcha. He finds he finds a bunch of zombies. He looks at the zombies. They look back at him. He leaves, but he does not close the door behind him. And the zombies are out now. Yeah, apparently the only thing holding those zombies back was a doorknob. Yeah, it wasn't even locked. I don't know yeah. these these. Th there's a uh, very varying degrees of intelligence among zombies. I got you. I mean, they may have simple mechanics maybe beyond their, their scope. There was actually before this, there was a point where they cut to the announcers and the, the Thunderdome was behind him. And behind one of the announcers was a zombie. And it was so funny that I thought that some guy at home just put on a zombie makeup and decided to be a zombie. And then it turned out it was all part of this tie-in and I was so disappointed. We see the back of Jimmy Uso's shirt for longer than they had the heat on Ray Jr. <laughs> <laughs> It's just a close-up of the words Jimmy Ooze on the back of his shirt forever and ever and ever as he walks from his house to the building, through the building, to wherever he's going. Eventually, he meets up with Jay, tries to recruit him away from Roman, fails. John Morrison tells the Miz that the Lumberjacks are zombies. Miz does not listen to him, blows him off, they walk away, the zombies are right behind them. <sighs> Well, here we go, everybody. Miz yeah. versus Damian Priest in a lumber zombie match. I mean, God, I was just watching this and like, it was dumb uh -huh. and everything like that. But you're right. Then it was something really weird. Where like for the first half of it, I guess maybe because it involved Miz, I was just like, ah, oh, whatever. It's fucking dumb. But like, who cares? But then, like, by the end, going. by the end of this, I was like, this is the fucking dumbest motherfucking thing I have seen all fucking year in this company. And I've been watching Bray Wyatt and Alexa. And I, I, I like, tweeted, I was like, these, you know, Bray should be sending these guys a Christmas card because we're going to have the end of the year voting. And somehow he's not going to win worst match of the year because of this fucking thing right here. And, you know, there's so many things I could say outside of the match. Mm -hmm. So it's a tie-in with a movie. What's this fucking movie? Army of the Dead. Army of the Dead. I guess starring Bat Big Dave. Batiste is in the movie. So a Zack Snyder film. It's like a tie-in with this movie, and mm -hmm. you know these dorks on the internet are like, "Oh, Brian, why do you hate this?" I mean, come on, it was a movie tie-in. They're they're getting paid. And I was yeah, like, people defending this. I'm like, fuck, dude. Do you know how much money this fucking company made? And are making right now. Like, do you know what their profit margins are and what they gross every year? Like, I doubt they even got a million dollars for this fucking tie-in. And they they put this fucking thing on television. I mean, everyone out there listening right now, seriously, I swear on a stack of Bibles. Think about what you make to do your job every year, okay? What WWE made to promote this movie, maybe you would have got an extra dime. Maybe. I'm not even sure it's that much. Like, that's what we're talking about here. To put this fucking piece of shit on television. Like, it's 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 irredeemable, this fucking match. And the, the funny thing is also, okay, forget, forget that they made no money, like a drop in the bucket to actually do this tie-in here. I have a friend that some of you might know, and I'm sure Vinny has a lot of them. You could probably tell me the same thing, Vinny, because your friends like all sorts of weird shit. That's but true. like, I got a friend. His name is Mark. You guys know uh, Mark? I, I'm familiar I'm with the man. Yeah, Huge Mark. Fan. Yeah, Mark is. Uh, he's really into film. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not only is Mark into film, but Mark um, he made films. He may right. still make them today. Actually, I don't know about in the pandemic and everything like that. But that's how I met Mark. Was Mark was do he was learning film at the Seattle Film Institute? I was doing film work. I auditioned for it, and I got a I got a part, actually because I put Death of WCW on my resume, and he'd read the book. But anyway, he is as big a, a lot, actually. horror fan as as like you could find. Like he loves it so much that he makes horror films. That's what he does. Okay. He was watching this match. You want me to read his... I don't think he'll care if he reads this text that he sent me. Please, please. He wrote me this text when this began, and he wrote, Yo, this is the dumbest thing I have ever seen. <laughs> and then, when it was over, he wrote, Minus 
infinite stars, okay? So who are you fucking targeting with this zombie tie-in? You ain't making jack shit to do it. It's not like horror fans are watching and going, Oh, this is the coolest fucking thing I've ever seen. There's zombies. You ain't getting a bigger horror fan than, than Mark here. And he gave it minus infinite stars and said it was the dumbest thing that he had ever seen. So what was the benefit of doing this? Anybody? Don't say listen to me talk about it. What was the benefit to WWE to doing this? Damien Priest has potential to be a big star. Yeah. This is on his resume. His right. first ever Observer Award is going to be one half of the worst fucking match of the year. And then some guy here is like, oh, yeah, there wasn't one bad match on the pay-per-view. Dude, take the zombies out. This was still a bad match. This match was not good. And it had lumberjacks, which made it even worse. The zombies distracted from the match. I don't remember a thing about. I the couldn't match. tell you one thing that happened in this match. I can remember the the the, the zombies, the post match. I couldn't tell you one wrestling maneuver that was used. And then the other thing is like my buddy Paul that I, I told him earlier. The answer was no, and you guys didn't know why. Paul, and I think he said this on Twitter as well. He was like, "Why was this so bad?" But like people accept the Day of the Dead shows with CMLL, where the loser gets sent to hell. Well. I mean, I could talk for an hour, but let me just give you one example. Let's say that I'm going to be doing a, a jiu-jitsu match in a tournament, okay? Mm -hmm. And it's on the Day of the Dead. And so they say, you're all going to do your match, and if you lose, we're going to do this silly gimmick where the zombies come and they, they take you to hell, and the fans mm -hmm. are going to laugh. Right. It's like, fine, whatever. I'll do my match and... You know, I'm, I'll surely win, so the other bloke's going to get dragged to hell. But even if I lose, like, who gives a shit? Like, I did a real match, and then you do some comedy thing for the people afterwards. This would be like if in that match, the referee was dressed as a zombie, and I had to be scared of him. Damien Priest is scared of fucking zombies. The Miz is afraid of fucking zombies. You made them look like... To and Miz is already a dork, so, like, who cares? But Damien Priest had to sell for fucking zombies? In, in, this in is Mexico, shit. In Mexico, it's treated as shtick. The announcers yes. sold this as legit. They even had, on the big screens and the other screens behind them, they had Fallout New Vegas uh, scenery in the background. Mm -hmm. um, some post-apocalyptic. They they turned on the fog machine. Yeah. Um this was supposed to be taken as serious. Yeah, the announcers actually said, we have moved it to a safe location. To yeah. escape the zombies. Because of zombies. Yeah. The big, I mean, if you're watching Lucha Libre or you're watching, like, Lucha Underground, there's an inherent logic where, yes, zombies or lizard people or time travelers or aliens or what have you, they're all part of the show and is accepted. WWE, for years and years and years, was just athletes competing, and sometimes they did crazy shit and fell off things and attacked each other and tried to murder each other, but it was all stuff that theoretically could happen. And in the past two or three years now, we've had Bray Wyatt doing all sorts of magical powers, and now we have zombies here in this match, and the rest it doesn't work because the rest of the show everyone just ignores it and moves on in their normal world like nothing has happened and beamer yes. beamer walls here on uh, i wish i could give this guy some cheer money he points out that when you do a day of the dead tie in he says here there's a cultural background for the day of the dead stuff for cmll whereas yeah. this product placement gets in the way of the match it sure well said. did it well sure said. Did. So it is some details, I suppose. They, they come out for this match, and Priest does his whole entrance. Miz and Morrison do their whole entrance. And once they get to ringside, Miz and Morrison realize that zombies are creeping in to seal their doom. And they find zombies up the ramp. Zombies are coming through the crowd. Zombies are coming from the other side. Now, they're zombies. And you'll find most zombies are, in fact, very, very slow. So Morrison has no problem fleeing. So... When they first started teasing, when I first saw the Lumberjacks in the background in the, in the uh, locker room when Morrison freed them, I assumed they would come out and Batista would spear them and plug his movie. And I thought, that's going to be awesome. Actually. That sounds great. Then they showed a tweet from Dave saying, no, he won't be there. 
but friends of his are. So now Dave is in concert with the zombies. Dave is working with the zombies. So then the zombies come out, and I thought, okay, well, this is stupid, but surely they will just do a thing where the zombies chase him around, he rolls into the ring, and Priest kicks him and pins him. No. <laughs> the zombies had to get their shit in, I suppose. So they're doing this match, and it's... I'm not even sure which is more absurd. Miz being scared of the zombies, even after his buddy Morrison just ran away, had no problem. He's just gone. He didn't care. Damian Priest is indifferent. It's just a Sunday afternoon for him. There's just zombies there. So whenever guys get thrown outside, they go, ah, zombies! And they run into the ring. And eventually, they're both out there. And the zombies are being pushed as so legitimate that Miz and Priest essentially have to fight back to back to survive. They must work together to survive. to survive the zombie horde. And one of the announcers says, no, you've got to focus on winning the match. And, and this is the thing <sighs> that drove me absolutely crazy. These are bloodthirsty zombies. They want yes. brains. But yet they are obeying the rules. Yeah, they, they won't get in the ring. <laughs> I, I, I will skip ahead this These now. zombies are hungry, but only if you go to them. I, I will uh, qu quote the Twitter account of one Drew Gulak. Okay. I would like to formally applaud the horde of zombie lumberjacks, TM, for properly obeying the rules of the match. <laughs> they remained outside the ring for the duration of the bout and attempted to keep both competitors inside without showing favoritism. So there you go. The, 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 the lumberjacks, the, the lumber zombies, were in fact... Uh, uh, Lawful good zombies who would enforce, well, lawful evil zombies, but they would enforce the rules and then go after brains. So when they, uh, far be it from me to complain about WWE saying wins and losses matter and trying to make it matter, but if you're actually trying to stop your brains from being eaten by zombies, then no, you do not have to focus on winning the match. You should focus on keeping your brains inside your head. Then Morrison just comes back. He was safe. I don't know why he came back. So he's doing like parkour to the zombies. I didn't write on the finish. Uh, Priest won. I, 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 I wrote down the finish. So Morrison is taking out zombies, which, I mean, I was at least, that's why I can't say it was the worst match of all time, because John Morrison got to live his dream of fighting zombies. <laughs> so he's fighting these zombies, and then they fucking eat him. He just gets sucked down behind one of the barricades and yeah. is eaten. And then Priest in the ring immediately hits the lights out for the pin. And then afterwards, the zombies ate Miz, and later, I mean, the announcers literally said that Miz had been eaten by fucking zombies. See, yeah, they, and they, they move they, on with the show! We got a match next! Well, the show must go on, Brian. Doesn't matter that two of our competitors, for, uh, former multiple-time world champion and his multiple-time tag team champion partner, were devoured by zombies live on our show in our ring! <laughs> There better be, if when they show up on TV, there better be the outrage that people had about Jericho showing up. Do you guys remember when uh, Miz was WWE champion like two months ago? <laughs> Not very long ago at all. We'd, we'd see how it played out. Yes. He got eaten by zombies two months later. Can you put that on his fucking Wikipedia while we're at it? You know what? I'm going to check that right now. Wikipedia. <laughs> the Miz. It's just horrible. Let's see. The Miz Wikipedia, born. Oh. Birthday is almost the same as mine. Oh, I'm very sad. There's no reference of his death. It's too bad. Somebody get on this right now. Miz died May 16th, 2021, when he was devoured by zombies live on pay-per-view. It's party time on the program today. I got our main man, Filthy Tom Lawler, here. We're going to have a celebration for you for your, for your epic victory here. Please sit down, Tom. What's going on? You are talking... To the champ, baby. Yeah. The new Japan strongest. I got balloons for oh, you. Oh, yeah. Yes. There were no balloons. It said, congratulations, new New Japan strong open weight champion. So instead I got thinking of you and a cat. We're not going to be drinking here on Twitch. We're only going to have a shot. That doesn't count as drinking. The finest. The finest absinthe. A Brian sized Diet Coke. Look at this thing. Yeah, this is this is a big one. Probably a little bit too big, but you know what? Let's do this. One, two, three. Oh, man. Oh. The greatest mixed martial artist slash wrestler in figure four history, Thomas Lawler, the greatest Taurus that has ever been a champion professional wrestler. The greatest Taurus? You know what I always do when we're done with calls? I hit this button. You know what it says? 
It says this. We are sorry, but the show has ended. Goodbye. This right here, my friend, this is Mini Zazu. He is the new show mascot. He's going to be sitting here. He's so proud of you for what you did over that weekend, Tom. Congratulations, Tom. Thanks, man. That's right. No tears on this show, Tom. Come on, buddy. There, Hold it there, together. Joy. You did a there, great there, job. Joy. We're all proud of you here. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.